بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد We're continuing our reflection yesterday about having a soft heart, having a sound heart. And we said one of the qualities of a hard heart, a, a heart becomes hard. We said when a person uh, talks without any necessary reason, they just talk for the sake of talking. They just talk for the sake of you know gossiping and just you know chatting away without any purpose in that talk. And we said the Prophet وسلم, said that those who do this, this will cause their heart to get hard. And we are trying to stay away from those deeds which make a heart hard. Let us continue and <clears throat> uh what are the other deeds that causes a person's heart to get hard? The Prophet وسلم, he says in the hadith that that be careful and be wary of laughing. That when a person he laughs excessively when a person he laughs too much when he laughs a lot this causes his heart to become hard this causes his heart to die the word which is used in the hadith is you meet which means causes to die so another deed that we have to stay away from uh, to make sure that we attain this taqwa is we don't laugh for no reason as we know in uh, today's culture uh, you know, the comedy industry is a very huge industry. And, you know, it's, it's, not, it's not wrong to laugh. It's not wrong to, you know, to joke around. But now when a person deliberately, every single time, you know, he's trying to crack a joke, every single time he's just trying to make you laugh, or you yourself are just trying to make other people laugh, then this is something a believer he should not do. Because as we know, laughing is good. You know, light humor humor is good or humor itself is good but there are certain rules and certain guidelines we have to keep in mind the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he says lullahu, woe to that person may curse be upon that person that in order to make people laugh he lies more or less to the meaning of the hadith that when he jokes he lies just so he can get the you know the, the people to laugh and this is something which is very lowly or something which is insignificant that to make the other person smile, to make the other person, you know, laugh or to make him happy, you have to lie in your jokes. And the Prophet ﷺ also encouraged us that if, you know, it should be noted and it should be advised that a person, he should not lie even during his jokes. So anyways, while we are fasting, this is something that we should not be doing, right? We said yesterday a person, he should not uh, talk excessively. And today, uh, uh, the re reminder is that he should not laugh excessively. Like I said, light humor is okay. But now the whole objective and the purpose of fasting is to, you know, capitalize every single second, right? Because every single second you have is very precious. So why would one waste those precious seconds of his in something futile, right? In something, something which is vain, which is laughter and joking. Right, so let us keep that in mind. Let us continue. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he also said that one of the things which causes the heart to get hard is excessive eating. And this is extremely important because in the month of Ramadan, this happens to many of us. Uh, uh, more so, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's applied during the time of uh, iftar generally that, you know, when especially now these are at home, maybe our, you know, our parents or spouses are cooking very good food for us, whatever it may be. Uh, so what ends up happening is, as we know, when you fast the whole day, your, your stomach will constrict, it will get smaller, which means you will not be able to consume as much. But then they say the eyes of, you know, the hunger of the eyes, you know, our eyes get hungry, meaning we end up eating more than we actually can. We end up taking more on our plate than we actually can. So let us just, uh, you know, ponder over this a little bit. The Prophet ﷺ, he said that don't eat excessively. 
don't eat too much. And, you know, there's a saying amongst the scholars that eating excessively takes away a person's intellect, take away, takes away a person's awareness. And that is what happened, as we all know, that when we eat a lot, and remember what is defined as eating a lot, eating a lot is defined where now a person, uh, as we're eating, we reach a certain point where a person, he burps, you know, a person, or he feels that, okay, you know what, I'm good. Once a person reaches that, he passes that point and he exceeds that point, now that's, that's what will be considered eating a lot, right? You eat so much that you can sometimes even feel the food by your throat. And, you know, if you drink a little bit of water, if you move around a little bit, you feel like so heavy, you feel the food is still there. So all of those things will be classified as eating a lot. And as, especially in the month of Ramadan, we have to be careful because the month of Ramadan is a month of worship. Right? It's not a month of just eating samosas or pakoras or you know, some nice food, whatever our culture that we're from, that you know, certain foods are only cooked in the month of Ramadan because that's just you know, the blessing of the month of Ramadan. The, one of the blessings is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy is so vast, vast and you know, uh, there are certain dishes that are made in this month because it's, it's part of the culture, part of, you know, our, our, you know, wherever we're from that, you know, in the month of Ramadan, this specific dish is made. But we should not get carried away and indulge ourselves to the extent that now we eat so much that after you finish your iftar, you feel lazy, right? And that is something that we have to train ourselves because remember, this is a month of spiritual training. In order to, you know, to go through this process, a person, he has to be aware of the fact that I can't eat so much, right? Remember, we're not saying don't eat, right? And this is going to be subjective. Every single person, his, you know, his amount of where he feels good or where, where he feels, you know, so to say saturated and he feels like his hunger is gone is, is going to vary upon, upon a person's, you know, body, upon a person's weight, all of that. Uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, when you, when you sit down to eat, then be mindful of the fact that one third should be for food, uh, one third should be for water, one third should be for, for air. Now remember, this is not like you know the Prophet ordering us, but he said this is something really good. And as we know from the health perspective, this is very good as well, right? So let us keep this point in mind that when we sit down for iftar, no doubt there's going to be you know very delicious food in front of you, but don't let the hunger of your eyes get the better. Because that will lead, you know, you to becoming lazy, right? A person, he will not be able to stand up for long. Or sometimes when he stands up for the Qiyam or for the Taraweeh prayer, because now everyone's praying at a home, then he feels lazy. He starts yawning, he starts burping, you know, all these different actions which now cause him to not pray. Or when he, you know, tries to recite the Quran, he feels really sleepy because he's so full. Right? He feels very lazy, so he doesn't feel like reading, uh, you know, reading Salah or re reciting the Quran. So keep this in mind that, yes, eat, but let us not eat too much, not to the point now where the food is, you know, like, like, like they say, by your throat. Right. So uh, may, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala really allow us to practice upon this point because many of us, we get easily carried away. And it's understandable why we get carried away because, you know, you're not eating the entire day, so you really look forward to the meal. You, really, you know, you sometimes you know that your mom, your parents, your spouse is making something very special, so you really look forward to it. But you know, remember, it's all about self-discipline. It's all about controlling the soul. Once you control your desires, once you control yourself, and you, you know, make a goal that you know what, instead of eating excessively, I'll eat a good amount today, right? You know, or maybe divide your meal in the sense that, okay, I'll have this much rice or maybe, you know, this much water or maybe whatever you're eating. Uh, so in that way, you are preparing yourself to do more worship because you don't want the month of Ramadan to come. And now because of these various deeds, you know, maybe talking too much or laughing too much or eating too much, you're not able to perform the best, right? A person who's in a marathon, he has to be mindful of each and every single action of his. The month of Ramadan is this 29, 30 days marathon. We have to be mindful of each and every single action of ours. And lastly, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said uh, that a person he should, in order to soften his heart, he should always remember death excessively. May Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala grant us the tawfiq to stay away from those deeds which make our hearts hard 
and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the tawfiq to make our hearts soft. So through these soft hearts, we can attain the nearness and the taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is desired in the month of Ramadan. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.